Do you struggle with the back of your head looking like this when you style your curls? Well, I'm gonna show you how to style the back of your curls in order to get more definition at the root, get more lift and volume around the crown area, and how to hide any cowlicks and help cover your scalp better. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina, and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things, doing step-by-step -step tutorials, and really helping you problem solve so that everyone can have healthier curls. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So let's go ahead and get started with how to style the back of your curls. So step number one is to style upright. And yes, you can still get volume in your hair if you're gonna style upright. You don't have to style upside down and I'll show you exactly how. So I took my hair down out of my hair repair towel and I like to wrap this around my shoulders. This is a great way to keep that wet hair off your shoulders if you don't like it touching your skin. I'm first applying the AG Recoil Curl Cream which is gonna help provide moisture and really help to clump up the curls. Styling your hair upside down is just asking for issues on the back of your hair and I'll show you exactly why. So on the left, you can see me brushing and styling my hair upside down. But if you'll notice, when I'm styling, like when I'm scrunching, I'm really only scrunching the bottom part of my hair. The entire first half of my roots and first half of my hair is not even getting scrunched as I'm styling. Even if you try and scrunch your hair to the side, which I know a lot of people do to try and get the backside, you're still missing a lot of the hair that's closer to the root. And this can really lead to stretched out roots, tons more tangles, you'll get that wonky stretched out part in the back. And it's really hard to come back upright, especially if you're someone with lower density hair like me, you end up with your scalp showing, it just gets stuck to your head, especially if you have very tangly hair. And another thing that I always notice when I try and style upside down is when I try and fix it and come back upright, I deal with a ton of stringiness because then I'm having to brush back through my hair again to get it unstuck from the back of my hair. And then I just end up with a ton of tangles and a lot more shedding. So I get a lot less shedding when I'm styling upright and it's just so much easier to apply the products. Now on the right, you'll see that I am applying my curl cream upright, but I also do not forget to do the back of the head. So I do apply some product to the back and I also do take that product all the way up to the root area. Also, you will want to make sure that you are thoroughly applying your products, including getting the back of your hair. So this is why I like to brush my products through my hair to ensure everything is evenly coated. Whenever I just try and scrunch in my product or maybe just glaze it on, it's only really getting on the surface and you're not coating every strand of hair with product. So that's why I like to brush it through. And if you're worried about your curls getting stretched out, don't worry about it. I will show you how to style in just a moment. We're getting everything smoothed out and evenly applied. And then we will go in and style to enhance those curls back up. Then I just run my fingers through so it's not stuck down to my scalp and it's a little bit easier to work with because we are going to be sectioning. So I'm just kind of pulling my fingers through. And bonus tip, if you want even more volume at the crown or just at your roots in general, you can go in with a foam. So this is the new Buclim Volumizing Foam and you can apply that right at your roots. So if you're worried about your hair getting weighed down by applying your curl cream or your leave-in too close to your roots, using a foam is a great alternative option because it's still going to style your hair and and provide moisture but it's also going to be very lightweight. So next step is to section off your hair so that way you can more thoroughly apply your gel. You don't wanna end up with areas, especially in the back of your head that don't have enough product. If you've ever had frizzy pieces show up after you finish drying your hair or maybe you didn't even apply any product to the back, it could be because you might need to try sectioning. So the amount of sections will really depend on your hair's density. The thicker your hair is, the more sections you're going to need. Here I'm applying the Jesse Curl Spiralicious Gel. This is a stronghold gel and it's great for humidity, which is why I'm using it right now. And then I'm gonna do some brush styling. So I don't like to spend a ton of time brush styling. So a quick method is just to brush your hair upwards. You wanna be lifting the hair up and away from the scalp. And you can do an entire section all at once with this method. And then you'll just wanna kind of break up some of those curl clumps just so you don't have curl clumps that are too thick. So I just kind of separate them. But you'll see that little bit of lift that you get right at the root. That's gonna help give you so much more volume. 
So then I'm just scrunching it to encourage those curls to bounce up and then I'm gonna continue on to the rest of the sections. I keep my spray bottle on hand because you do wanna make sure that your hair stays nice and evenly wet. You don't want areas, especially the back, to start to dry as you're styling. So you'll need to apply more water. So then I'm going in with a little bit more of the Jessie Curl Gel and just raking that in and then I'll do that fast brush styling method here in this middle section as well. I'm also checking the back with a handheld mirror throughout each section and that's just going to ensure that I've actually defined the root area of each section. That's going to give you so much more definition and volume in the back, especially right at the root. So I'm standing in front of a mirror, that's how I'm able to see the back by holding up the handheld mirror. So now moving on to the very top section, I like to split this in two and that's just so I can more easily style the crown area and actually focus on getting volume and lift there. And I like to pick up a section that's about as wide as my brush so that way I can style the entire section all at once so I don't have to do individual curls with the brush. So I'm also applying some gel directly to this area. Again, you'll want to make sure that you're getting your gel all the way from the roots to the ends, especially if you struggle with a lot of flyaways and root frizz and just those shorter hairs that like to stick up and poke through from underneath. This is gonna help so much. I'm also combing that gel through to make sure it's evenly coated. So what you want to do with the crown is actually place the brush right at the base. So you want to get as close to your root as possible and then turn your wrist slightly and then pull the brush all the way up. So this is going to give you really nice lift and lots of volume. You'll just want to be careful though that you don't turn your wrist too much because sometimes it can lay a little bit funny. Like you'll notice when you lay your hair back down that the roots might not lay correctly and might look a little bit tangled. So just be careful to not curl your brush too much. I also wanted to mention that you should pick up horizontal sections around your crown if you struggle with your scalp showing. This also gives you that nice bend right there at the root, but if you struggle with cowlicks or maybe you have different growth patterns where the hair wants to split or maybe your part goes all the way back, using horizontal sections is going to help cover that up because then it just covers it lengthwise to where you don't get that separation happening. If you use vertical sections like you might for the rest of your head, it's just gonna create more separation. So horizontal at the crown and then I use vertical all throughout. So I'll show you what the vertical sections look like which help give volume on all the other sections. So once I'm done styling, I like to just kind of shake out the sections so you don't see any section lines. And then I wanted to show you a little bonus tip if you're still struggling with your scalp showing, maybe you're getting a lot of separation right there that's showing, you can take your brush or even probably use your fingers and just kind of brush it lightly in the opposite direction. So I'm just directing the hair in the opposite direction so that way it doesn't keep laying in the same direction it wants to grow in, which is making it split and making my scalp show. And I'm not completely brushing all the way down because I don't want to mess up all the curl clumps I just formed. I'm just kind of lightly going over the surface just to move the hair but also not disturb the lengths of my hair if that makes sense. So next step is to scrunch. So I'm taking my hair repair towel or you can use a t-shirt and I'm just leaning to the side and then scrunching. You also can try lifting up the root. That way you can really get up there. So if you're really struggling with your roots being stretched out in the back or maybe you're not getting any root curls and definition at the root, especially in the back, you'll wanna make sure that you're lifting that hair up and you're scrunching all the way to the root. Like I'm pulsing directly at my scalp. Now you wanna be gentle, don't pull your hair out or anything like that, but this is gonna help ensure that you get more curl definition up there if you're looking for that. Just scrunching on the ends aren't going to do much and if you struggle with your roots being a lot straighter this can help but also just note that a lot of people just have naturally straighter roots and that's totally normal too. Then I'm just checking the back with a handheld mirror one more time because you want to make sure that your hair is laying how you want while it's wet because once it starts to dry it's hard to cover the scalp. So now it's time to diffuse and I'm using my Curlsmith Diffrision, which I love because the diffuser head is so large so that way you can dry your hair pretty fast without needing high heat. But one thing that can really impact the way the back of your head turns out with diffusing is if you let the back section dry too fast without kind of shrinking it up. So if you're trying to get a lot of shrinkage with your diffuser by doing this scrunching method all over, make sure you're actually getting the back because if it starts to dry too fast, it's gonna look elongated on those areas that haven't been scrunched with that diffuser. So make sure you're really targeting the back. I like to use the prongs of the diffuser to lift the roots and that's going to give so much root lift. So another bonus tip, if you are still struggling with that separation at your crown, then you can take a clip like these curl keeper ones, I can link them for you down below, and clip those on any cowlick areas or along your part. And this is also gonna help give you so much volume. Then you can finish off diffusing with them in or let them just air dry. 
So once the hair is completely dried, you can take the clips out and then just scrunch and fluff. I actually applied a little bit of the Bounce Curl oil to my hands and this is gonna help add so much shine and also help to really break up that gel cast and it's gonna help to lock in moisture. If you really wanna amp up the volume or if you need more hold, you could even try finishing with a hairspray. This is the new Curl Smith Flawless Finish hairspray and that really helps to provide just a veil of humidity protection and give a lot of volume. I love how these results turned out. I like how my hair still looks and feels very soft and it's not like too PC and stuff, but yet it still has really good hold. Typically I don't finish off with those finishers all the time, like the oil and the hairspray, but it is currently really, really high humidity and it's actually raining right now. So that's why I wanted to go with this combination. So hopefully it holds up because I am gonna be outside some this weekend. I also wanted to share with you a video from Sophie Marie Curley, which is one of my favorite follows over on Instagram. And she also has a YouTube channel here as well, but she actually has a method that she calls the flip section method. So if you are someone who wants to style your hair upside down, but you want a way to come upright, without having your roots messed up and stuff, you can definitely check that out. She has some really great tutorials on that and she walks you through how to do that. I've actually tried out her method here on my channel before, so I can put that video for you linked down below. All the products that I used in this video and the tools will be linked in the description box down below, along with the link to the shop page on my blog where you can filter based on your hair's needs. So if you wanna find some humidity proof gels, or if you want to find a gel without glycerin, or maybe you want a specific formula of gel, you can use those filters on my blog to find exactly what you need. So the link for that will be down below as well. And if you're still needing more help with how to cover your scalp and just dealing with calyx overall, I have an entire video all about how to cover your scalp. And there's a lot of tips and tricks in there for low density and very thin curly hair as well. So I will have that video linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.